In this video, we will look at a couple of examples to practice working with and making histograms. Example A, construct a frequency distribution table with a bin size of 10 for the following data, which represents the ages of 30 lottery winners. There we have the data, and then create a histogram for the data. So when we're making our frequency distribution table and the bin size is supposed to be 10, the first thing we have to do is decide what exactly are our bins and how many will we have. So what we should do is look at all of our data and look for the extremes. What is the range that we're dealing with? I notice it looks like, just based on looking at this, that the smallest number is 22 and the largest number looks to be 77. So our range is going from about 20 to 80. So we can make bins in groups of 10, starting with 20 to 30, then 30 to 40, and so on. So now that we have that sort of set up in our heads, we can start making our table. So in our table, we need two things. We need to have the bins, which describes the values that we are looking at. And we need to have the frequency so that would be how many values were actually in that each range. So the first one is going to be between 20 and up to 30, but not including 30, because we don't want to count anything that was 30 twice. The next bin will include 30 and go up to 40, but not include 40. So it really just goes up to 39. If we were dealing with decimals, then it would go up to 39.99999. But since these are all whole numbers, for the case of this, it's really just going up to 39. And so on. So we can keep making our bins going up to 80. Once we have all our bins, we can fill in the frequencies. So you should go through your data and count, for example, how many of the numbers are between 20 and 29. So as I go through, I have one, looking, here's another one, two, and three. So the frequency is three. And you're going to do the same thing for each bin. And it helps to check them off or do something as you go through. So the, at the end, you can make sure you accounted for everything. Once we have finished our frequency distribution table, we can make our histogram. So for the histogram, we can go down to the graph and we'll use our data to help us. So we want to set up first all of our bins. So first, I'll say that this area right here is going to be from 20 to 30. And then I'll do the same thing for the next, between the next two tick marks. That will be between 30 and 40, and so on, until you have all of your bins. Then, along the y-axis, we want to scale accordingly. So I notice that the range of frequencies goes up to 8. So I can probably count by 2s and go 2, 4, 6, 8. And those are our frequencies, which is the number of winners. Now I can label my axes. Here we had age in years and on my y-axis this was the number of winners. Once we've set up our graph we can actually make the histogram. So this is just a matter of making bars that are the correct height. So for my bin from 20 to 30 I had a frequency of 3 so I'm going to go up to 3 in my first bin. So just go up to 3 from either side connect them and you can fill it in if you want. Now you're going to do the same thing from 30 to 40 and from 30 to 40 the frequency was 5. The two bars will touch in a histogram. The bars will always touch because the data is continuous and that will look like that and continue in the same way for the rest of our bins. And we get a histogram that looks like this. Now that we can see this histogram, it's a very nice visual representation of our data. And we can see this is a unimodal set of data. There's one mode there in the center. It's also pretty bell-shaped. Um, it's pretty symmetrical and looks like the most common age 
and our mode was between 50 and 60 years. So that's how you go from a set of data to making a frequency distribution table, deciding on your bins, and then turning that table into a histogram. Remember that the hardest part of that is probably going from the data to the table. Once you have the table, it's just a matter of actually drawing the bars, but the hard part is figuring out what should your bins be, how big are they, how many are you going to have, and remember that sometimes up to you, unless a problem explicitly states, as it did here, that we had a bin size of 10, we could have made the bin size be 5, and then we would have had more bins. We would have gone from 20 to 25, 25 to 30. It all depends on how you want to see the data and represent it and what you're going for.